there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. When it comes to high-end options for amplification, it's been a big year for our friends over at Moscone coming out with two brand new models in the Pro Series lineup. Today, we've got product expert Nick Wingate in the house to break it down for us. This is CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM, Moscone, and it starts now. What's going on, my fellow 12 volt geeks? Welcome to another session of CMA Connected. We are we are literally nerding out all month on high-end audio file grade gear. Now it's uh no secret, it's one of my favorite things to talk about because it's fun, it's why we get into the stuff. We strive to have that ultimate visceral listening experience in our ride, and this is the type of product that gets us there. So, without further ado, today, as mentioned in my demo, uh, my intro rather, we're talking about Italian brand Moscone. They sell an incredible selection of amplifiers as well as DSP and even DSP integrated amplifiers. And today we're going to be focusing very much at the upper echelon of their offering um, because they have a few new toys that have been kind of causing a buzz. And we're going to find out all about that. So first up, let's invite our good friends at Trends Electronics, who, of course, is the Canadian authorized distributor for Moscone products and their sales manager, Mr. Grant McFadder. Good morning, Ben. I brought you some oh. car audio porn. You know what those red fans do to me, man. You know, it, and you do it anyways. You do it anyways. That's why I did it. That's why I did it. Oh, boy. Well, listen, that's a great way to start because that's what we're literally diving into today is those Pro Series amplifiers, Grant. Moscone is one of those brands which which uh, obviously is a top-of-the-line offering uh, within the amplifier segment. Um, I want to hear your take on it. You've, you've been now the distributor now for, what, two years about now? Three years maybe? Um, they were going, going into year three. And how's that going and the feedback and all it's that It's going really good. Um, this stuff created a lot of buzz in the summer. The 430 created a lot of buzz because there was a limited amount of them available. I believe that's been resolved and we have some more in stock and, and good to go. Uh, the new one that's creating all the buzz right now is the 830 DSP, which is an eight channel beast with uh, integrated 12 channel DSP. Mm. So um, bridgeable, unlike some other brands. Take those shots while you can. Take them. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's that. The Pro Series is really where we sell the bulk of the Moscone product. They have the uh, AS series. They have A class. Isn't that they interesting have... that it's the top of the line offering that you're doing the best with? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I think when people, it's like kind of like anything. When you talk about recession, people that you know don't have money, they can't afford it. But people with money, they're going to go and buy whatever they want anyway. So we've seen that. Uh, over the years, you know, we've been around through many ups and downs in the economy and the high end always sells no matter what time of year it is and no matter what the economy is doing. So mm -hmm. people that have got money and want good tunes, they'll they'll find a way to buy it. And that's something about Moscone is, I mean, if you're in tune with what's going on with the, the big fabrication projects or the big builds or the, some of the competition stuff, I mean, that amplifier shows up a heck of a lot. I just want to highlight one of our viewers here, Kevin Anderson, said, oh, my God, red fan porn. Bro, I hear you. Exactly what I was trying to say. Uh, shout out to Keith McCumber, who I've seen also just tuned in. So uh, let's continue with this red fan porn. Uh, we're going to we're gonna bring Some in. Gold circuit board, board porn as well, if you zoom oh, in. I know. I love how you started with that, too. We will. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, 
wanted to, to just let our listeners know we actually have a special guest coming on today. He's a dealer. He's out in Arkansas. Uh, not only is, does he retail and sell and install uh, Moscone amps, he also competes with them. So it's going to be interesting to hear kind of his experience with it. And uh, so if dealers wanted to hear it from another dealer perspective, we're definitely going to cover that today. However, we got a video. I was talking to Dean Bayet, you know, the guy from Car Five Star Car Stereo. And uh, he had the opportunity to uh, try one of these new amps, I believe it was the 430. Did a video on it. Some of you might have seen it. Some of you might not have. We cut a little clip out for you. We're going to start with this. And when we come back, we'll get Nick Wingate in here. What do you think, Grant? That, that video is about 15 minutes long. It's well worth the watch. But this is like we could just play this video on loop for the next 35, 40 minutes. And I think my job would be done. But go ahead. Hit it. Let's hit it. Let's watch the video. You're listening to this hot box and the heck out of it. And definitely... This is by far the best sounding amplifier we've ever tested. Hands down, this thing is the most incredibly sounding amplifier. Incredibly? Incredible sounding amplifier. It's holy Jesus. I mean, we've been playing a yeah. wide variety of songs and even some songs that we know just fall apart yeah. when we play them and it has just just effortlessly played them like it was no big deal and that was something that nick used as a term when we talked to him it just effortlessly does things and he's not wrong the mid bass the response the snappiness of the tweeter everything about it just it seems like it doesn't care it can just do it in Dean's words, and I'll quote, holy Jesus. Mic okay. drop. <laughs> yeah, so let's get the skinny on this because he, uh, Dean does mention Nick, and uh, obviously they had a conversation. I'd love to hear the insight, the details of, of what led up to that um, particular video and what happened after as well. So without further ado, let's bring in the national trainer for Orca. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Nick Wingate. Good morning, everybody. Thank howdy, howdy. How are, how's my good friend in Texas doing today? Doing much better. It is 62 degrees Fahrenheit outside and there is not a cloud in the sky. So I'm a happy person. You're a happy camper. Perfect. We got you on a good day. <laughs> yes. Um, so Nick, we are talking, we're, you know, I don't expect any full catalog explanation today. We are being very specific today. We're only talking about that upper crust, right? Sure. Um and I know there's a presentation. We're going to talk about the specifics and the technicalities. But let's talk about that video real quick. Because, you know, Dean and Fernando do a great job boxing, unboxing, testing all kinds of product, all different types of brands, right? I mean, th mm -hmm. th that's not what it's about. Um, but to hear Dean kind of stutter and a loss for words and use poor grammar <laughs> <laughs> was, interesting, was interesting to watch. And um, his description was particularly interesting. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to kind of set us like, how did that come about, the conversation leading up to that video, and what dialogue did you have with them after they did that video? Well, uh, we, I had done a uh, one, of their pod, one of their broadcasts on a Monday night. We were we got to talking about this amplifier, and you know they had not received the amp as of yet when we had done this video, and they wanted the description of it. And I, I just told them, I said, it's a effortless playing amplifier in which you can put you play any kind of music. I don't care what it is; it is effortless. The amplifier never sounds like it's straining. You know, we've all heard amps that want to just say, no, I am not going there. This thing doesn't do that. This thing, you can throw heavy, heavy, heavy classical music at it, or you can throw heavy compressed rap music at it. It just doesn't sound like it, it's going to quit. You know, you, you, you know, Ben, when you, you and I have talked about, you know, big engines and horsepower, and when you have an engine that has a ton of torque, mm -hmm. And it's got horsepower to back up the torque. And it feels like it's going to pull and pull and pull and it never quit. That's what this amplifier does. You know, it just doesn't quit. It's it's freaking amazing what this thing does. And, <clears throat> you know, I think it's a testament to, you know, what uh, Filippo was attempting to pull to, to design and, and he's pulled it off. 
I, I, I feel it very interesting that you use an analogy from racing to describe this. You talk about horsepower and torque. You know, horsepower gets you the speed, but torque is what gives you the acceleration and the dynamics in that speed. Um, so it's very interesting that you use that analogy. Now, uh, obviously, within that video, and I love how Grant just keeps on flashing me today. <laughs> like it's 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 a it's abusive almost to this point. But anyhow, uh, it's better the amplifier than my taking my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after that video, what was the dialogue like with 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 Dean and Fernando? Uh, I haven't talked to him since they've done this. Oh, um, okay. I haven't had a chance to. Um, but uh, I, you know, those two are brutally honest. Um. To the point of almost being, you know, I would almost say they're from Texas, but they're not. Um, and, you know, they don't pull punches. They never have. And when they start talking about the best I have, you know, we have ever heard, they're not kidding. Um, I know it, you know, many, many years ago, um, there was an amplifier that, a gentleman by, by the name of Nelson Pass designed for Adcom. It was called an Adcom 4702. And it was a class A amplifier in 70 watts a channel. And it would scare the you know what out of you because it was just absolutely amazing what it could do. It was, it was effortless and it would have played. The, and that amplifier in 1995 retailed for $3,200. <laughs> this amplifier, for, and I can say this unequivocally, this is the first time I've heard an amplifier outperform that one. This one does. And not at that price. If and you did the exchange and, and, and inflation since. You not even in Canadian price. dollars. No. Yeah, that's, that's not even in Canadian dollars. I mean, you're looking at somewhere, if we were to do apples and apples and talk about <clears throat> somebody's inflation curve and we can go there, that amplifier retail somewhere probably between ten and $15,000. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Know, this design right here outperforms it. And that's okay. saying so let's not get too deep into it. Uh, there's an opportunity. We're going to dive a little bit deeper from a technical standpoint. Uh, Grant, I know you're very excited. I mean, obviously that, you know, I've always said this. Um, it's not the first time I'm going to say this about these amps. And, and it's not just these amps. There's a couple <clears throat> components in the industry, which I will say this statement too. And that is when it looks that good, it sounds great sitting still. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. even need to be plugged in yet. And I'm already wanting one. Like that's, there's a couple of key components that are out there that, <laughs> that give me that emotion, right? Yep. Whereby it's just like, it just looks so good. I don't even need to turn it on and I'm pretty satisfied so far, right? So oh, yeah. having said that, having said that, um, let's get into it. We're gonna set you up, uh, Nick and Grant, you guys are stand. I know uh, Nick's, uh, sorry, Grant's got some product to show, that whole mix up. And then when we come back, uh, I, wanna, I wanna get our dealer on and, and okay. get to know him a little bit. And then we'll kind of round table and discuss what we learned today because we're having a high-end audio conversation. So let's go and bring up the, the presentation and we'll get, unleash Nick onto uh, showing us what this high-end offering from Moscone is all about. You got, you got the floor, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So as you can see, um, one of the things that we're all quite proud of is that every aspect of this amplifier is actually made in Italy. Uh, whether it's the board itself, the chassis, uh, the design, everything is done in-house in Italy. And that's uh, a testament to their quality control prowess um, to the point to where every single solitary part, you know, they're chosen by the engineers, uh, not only for longevity, but also for musicality. And that's the big key when we're talking about these amplifiers. And especially when we're talking about the Pro 430. Um, you look at this, and, and of course, Grant's been showing us you know, this amplifier, but when you take a look at the amp internally, it is different from a lot of the other pro amplifiers. Um, you will look at it, and you know, of course, when we're talking about a minimalist approach to, to parts, uh, Filippo is, is the king of that, the gentleman who's our chief engineer. And when you look at this one, though, it's a little bit different in that there's a few more parts in it. And it's because of what Filippo was trying to do. Now, I've been, I've been talking about Filippo. Let me let you guys know who he is. He is the chief design engineer um, at Moscone right now. And he's, 
he and I talked about this amp in particular, and I, and I wanted some background information on him on who he was and what he was, where he came from, and why this amplifier is his, basically, he calls it his his virtuoso. Um, he originally was an electrical, he's not an electrical engineer, but he does have a degree in electronics. And he had a huge passion for power amplifiers. And what he wanted to do when he got into the industry is, you know, like a lot of people, he has a lot of enthusiasm, he has a lot of great ideas, and wanted to build what is known as the perfect amplifier. No compromises, no flaws, build the absolute best. And he did. He built a lot of design, and they built a lot of great amplifiers for a lot of companies that are based in Italy and Germany and in France. Um, and through all those many years, up to the point when 2012, 2010, when he went to work for Moscone, he, he had built all of these amps, but he thought something was missing from the way all of the amplifiers sounded. And he wanted to incorporate that into a design. He wanted to bring something into it. Well, that something was a lot of the things that Grant and myself and Ben have talked about, you know, is on the home audio side of things, which he was a big part of, he became a fan of tubes. Imagine that. And that's what was missing. He wanted some things, a design that was going to bring the emotion and the visceral impact that tubes done correctly can bring into this. And, and that's what this design is all about. And he, he changed everything. You know, one of the things that he told me, so amplifiers have always been, you know, just an amp, but it wasn't a, looked upon like a musical instrument. So he looked upon the amplifiers like a musical instrument. Um, he wanted to overcome some limits in certain technology, like MOSFETs, for example. Um, but yet he wanted to maintain some of the things that those those MOSFETs could do, you know, because we all know MOSFETs can produce a, a ton of power, but they're not exactly the best sounding output devices in the world when it comes to audio, quote unquote. And the sound that he was looking for, it was the warmth that tubes can give you. He wanted to have it sound like um, there was bipolar transistors in this thing. Uh, bipolar transistors don't produce the kind of power MOSFETs do. So the circuit design, as you see right here in front of you, you look at this board and I can tell you that the circuit designs is a little bit different. There are more parts in this amplifier than you will see in most of the pros. There's a reason why. Um, every output channel on these is different. Okay, there are different MOSFETs being used. There's different op amps being used. There's different parts being used in order to get the kind of sound he was looking for. And I'm not going to go into the details about it because we'd be here for the next hour and a half. Uh, but I can tell you that this was a very, very long time coming, getting here. And so when you're looking at this amplifier and you look at the output devices and, you, and you're like, there's 170 watts of channel sitting here at 4 ohms and 225 at 2 ohms. Really? And if you bridge this thing, it's 450 watts of channel at four ohms. That is a lot of power at four ohms bridged out of this amplifier. And the cool thing about this amplifier is it maintains the beauty of its sound, even if it's bridged. It is a class A amplifier. It is also a class AB in which this amplifier slides. And that's the way he describes it to me. It slides back and forth between class A operation and class AB operation, depending on a number of different factors. And again, I don't want to go deep into this because we got a lot more to talk about. But suffice it to say that this amplifier sounds completely different than any other car audio amplifier I've ever heard. It, it does things differently. Just like, and Dean's, Dean and Fernando are right. It does things completely differently. Now, yes, it's got high pass and low pass crossovers built into it. But I want you to look at this where it says signal to noise ratio is greater than 83 dB. Whoopee. Well, and there are people out there who will say, well, this amp's not very well designed. Uh, 
That's not the case. Filippo told me this was not about numbers. Um, this was about how this thing sounds. And if you will look at some of the tube amplifiers that have been designed and built in the world, whether it's Macintosh, whether it's Carry Audio, whether it's VTL, the numbers are not that good. I mean, you see distortion levels in the one and two and three percent range, and yet sound absolutely amazing. And that's what this amp is. It's about how good it can sound. You know, because I, I will tell you right now, if you want an amplifier that's got total harmonic distortion of 0.0003%, well, this is not the amplifier for you. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but I will tell you, if you can hear the distortion in this amplifier, I want you to call me. Because I've pushed it. I've pushed this thing really hard and I don't hear it. Um, again, this thing is a class A slash class AB. It's not going to be extremely energy efficient. No, it's going to get hot. I will tell you right now. You know, this thing heats up. As you heard, you heard Fernando and, and Dean talk about this tinder box. Yeah, this thing gets hot. Okay. So if you if, if if those are parameters that you're needing if for you and your install, that, that this is not your amplifier. But if you want to have the absolute best there is in the reproduction of music in your vehicle, this is it. This thing, well, and it, true, it is very true. When you listen to this amplifier and you get it tuned correctly, it will make the hair on your arm stand up. It will make you go, there's no way my car sounds like this. You know, I'm, Jim Rogers is going to be over here in a little bit, and Jim has one of these in his truck. And when we dialed Jim's truck in, it was flat scary. I mean, it was flat scary what his truck sounds like. Um, so I will tell you if if you are if it's about the music, if it's about you enjoying every aspect of the music, this is your amplifier. This is what you want. I promise. Okay, Grant, you want to add anything to that, sir? Uh, yeah, we're talking about the uh, energy. It's not energy efficient. Uh, if you take a look at that amplifier, that uh, fuse rating on there, it's 150 yeah. amps. This yeah. is not for your run-of-the-mill <clears throat> Honda Civic with a 90 amp alternator type type <laughs> amplifier. You want you want to be able to give this thing some power. I mean, the, the guys that have used it say everything you've said. It's it sounds amazing. Uh, the goosebumps, the the arms and their hair. Even if they shave their arms, their hair still stands up on end. Um, <laughs> it's just a great sounding amplifier. Period. And, um, you know, it's just more people need to experience it. So we're going to do something special for this uh, to get them on demo boards because it does sound incredible. Uh, I, I, I agree. And I think that's a really good idea because <laughs> if you're going, you have to experience it. You've got to hear this to get it. because It even looks good with his clothes on. <clears throat> it's true. <laughs> All right. So. As Ben said, um, there's been a recent addition um, to the pro lineup. We have a brand new, relatively brand new, eight channel pro amplifier that has a built in um, eight to 12 DSP processor. Now, that's, this is class AB technology um, in every respect. It has um, basically an eight to 12 built into it. And yes, you can bridge channels of these amplifier of this amplifier. Um, it is a lifesaver for an awful lot of people because of the amount of power that this thing can produce uh, and its flexibility. So my own personal opinion is this. If you take the front four channels, the first four channels in a 530 and you look at them, these numbers look almost the exact same. And what I think they've done is they basically have taken channels one, two, three, and four in the 530, and they've added another set of channels, one, two, three, and four, into this amplifier and put in an H12 processor. That's basically what this is. Because if you look at it, you see you know, channels one, two, three, and four, 90 watts a channel, and then five, six, seven, eight, or 170 watts a channel at four ohms. And 115 and 220 respectfully that is virtually identical to a 530 in every respect 
It's the same kind of input sensitivity as two volts. You know, it'll accept up to 30 volts RMS. And of course, if you turn the direct DSP processing on, which bypasses all of the input stages of the amplifier completely, you know, you get 5.3 volts clean into it. It does have a Toslink digital input. Uh, you can run any of the external cards into it. Um, it does have eight analog RCA inputs, but there is an option that if you need 12 channels of input, you can get, you can do it. So if you're wanting to have to go work on one of the brand new Cadillac Escalades, it's got 32 channels and somebody wants you to change all of them out. Here's your amplifier right here. You can get three of these and you're good to go. So you're going to end up with 32 channels of amplification with 36 channels of input. You can probably make this thing work, but don't call me because I'm not coming to help you tune the car. That's your job. No Sorry, love y'all, but no, uh-uh. But that's the flexibility that's built into this amplifier. And the reports that we're getting back from users in the field is they are extremely happy with the flexibility. They're very happy with the sound. They're very happy with the output power. The dynamics are there. Everybody says it sounds like a 530. It's just more of it. And uh, as you can see right here, if you take a look at it, Obviously, this is where all the crossovers are located. Uh, when you pull the plastic sleeve back, you've got high level input, low level input. You've got high pass, band pass, low pass capability, and obviously direct DSP on each individual um, RCA input. Um, it's in a 530 chassis. It's known as the 30 chassis, just like the 430s. It uses the exact same graphic user interface as in all of the other uh, processors that are being built by Moscone today. Uh, so you don't have to go and learn some new graphic user interface. It uses the exact same one. It has all of the features that an H12 aerospace has. And that includes the up mixers that are built into it. Uh, it's all there. Uh, the measuring system is still there. You can, your input signal can be measured. You can measure to see if you've got a, uh, any kind of all pass filters being used, if there's any kind of delay. If there's a high pass, low pass, band pass, if there's any EQ on the input signal, you can see all of that. It, it has that built into it. It still has the built-in RTA, uh, and it also has the ability for you to get, use a microphone, use the direct pulse, and you can measure your distance between your speakers and set that up as well. All of those functions are still here. Okay, So it is a full functioning, completely 8 to 12 processor that is built into this amplifier. And um, like I said, reports in the field uh, coming back to us that everybody is very, very happy with the performance in the amplifier. Uh, again, you take a look at the pro amp here. This is a minimalist approach to parts. You notice it doesn't have quite as many parts as the 430. Hmm. Yeah, it's because 430 is completely different. And, and, and this is where I cannot say enough about the 430. <laughs> um, but again, this is, uh, you know, eight channels of amplification, a lot of output devices, um, really good power supply. You see the windings on the toroid are extremely tight. I mean, I can go on. But um, I encourage you that if you are looking for a multi-channel amplifier with DSP processing built into it, that is class AB and gives you the ability to go and bridge channels to get more power, um, this is it. You know, this thing sounds really, really, really good. Again, if you've heard of five Pro 530, then you know what this amplifier can sound like. For a single amp system with, for a basic system, not these guys that want to do 32 channels. <clears throat> I think this is probably one of the best amplifiers out there, period, because it's got everything you need in it. Right? Eight channels of power, bridgeable power if you need it. And uh, the eight, 8 to 12 aerospace DSP, if you want more power on the sub channel than 440 by 2, you know, strap a, a Pro 110 on the other other side of this and you've got a killer, killer system. So uh, absolutely. <clears throat> it's got four analog outputs on it. So if you need uh, to put external amplifiers, the processor internally will control them and work with them. You can tune everything, everything you need to with them via the DSP. That's not a problem. Okay. So to, uh, to sum all this up, you know, these designs 
um, have literally kind of taken the 12 volt world by storm. And it's, it's a testament to the staff at Moscone because they've, they've taken all of their years and decades of experience and they're bringing these designs out, utilizing extremely high quality parts and making sure that the, the designs are giving us the, the maximum flexibility is designed into them. So if you want to take an, an 830 and you want to bridge it to six channels and put lots of power on the mid-base drivers, you can do that. If you want to bridge it all the way down to four channels, you can do that. You know, if you want to, I mean, I can go on. <laughs> it's suffice to say there's maximum flexibility built into all of them. And uh, it could be the 410, the 110, the 210, any of these amplifiers, you know, they're all basically designed off of the same type of circuit with the exception of the 430. Okay. There's tons of power available on all of them. There is maximum flexibility built into all of them. Um, you know, I, I mean, Jim's going to be on here in a minute. Jim at one time had a Pro 110 on every speaker in his truck. Now, a lot of people think that's just a sub amplifier. And I will tell you, no, it's not. It is a full range class D amplifier. That sounds an awful lot like a class AB amplifier. And, you know, Jim has done extremely well in a number of the money rounds that we've had in the competition scene down here in the United States using a Pro 110 on every single solitary speaker in his truck. So don't be afraid to do that. And yes, he had 500 and some odd watts on every single speaker in his truck. And his truck sounded amazing. You know, so take a lot. If, you, if you're just now learning about this line, take a look at what is here. Okay. With the inclusion of the 830, if you cannot design and build a system that have, will have a superior sound, that will have maximum flexibility, and and let's face it, with the kind of power these things produce and the footprint they have, you can build just about any system in any vehicle for anybody and make them happy. And I can tell you by the number of builds that are being done that we see that I get pictures of every day. It's amazing what people in the in, are out there are doing. You know, they're taking the 530, for instance, and they're bridging it to three channels. And they're putting, you know, uh, channels one and two bridge to a tweeter, channel three and four bridge to a mid-range. They're taking the fifth channel and they're putting it on the mid-base driver. That would be for Some the left. Crazy guy with the Broncos doing that. Yeah, the Bron and that's right. And and our our national sales manager's Bronco is done that way. He's got you know Focal KR uh, excuse me his Focal KX threes, and we've got one amp driving the left hand side of the car, one amp driving the right hand side of the car, and then we've got a number of Pro four tens driving the rears and the center channel, and one tens driving the subs. Um, again, it's it's your imagination. Have at it. You can design just about anything you want and make it a superior sounding system. In the Pro Series, just the lineup of the of the amplifiers, it, it all makes sense. You've got six amplifiers that you can do anything you want with it. Uh, I love these, the, the 410, the 210, the 110, just because of the physical size of the amplifier. I mean, that's that's my hand on top of the amplifier, and I don't have big hands. This is <laughs> it's not a big amplifier. Right. This is, you know, no. may, might look bigger on camera, but that's why I put my hand on top of it. This is not a big amp. You can put multiple of these underneath the seat of a car in the back of a back wall of a pickup truck. I've, Mr. Pate's done a gazillion F 150s no. and GM pickups with like six or seven or eight and nine no. of these in the back wall of a truck. So yes. Just that the, the, the lineup itself in the Pro Series is why it, I, I know why it's so popular is because there's so many things you can do with it. Um, not everyone's got room for a 530 or a 430, no. but they've got room for these. I don't care what kind of car you're driving. You, you've got an exotic car. You can find room to put a, a couple of amplifiers, like a 410 and a 210 and a 110 series amplifier in there, no problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we're now about to start talking about DSP, I want you to do me a favor. Grant, grab your uh, Otomo 4 to 6. Oh, I need some help lifting it. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> And I want you to help. 
in your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a full boat DSP processor that uses the same graphic user interface as the H12 processor does. It's just not as many channels, but it has the same flexibility and the same power in it. Yes, that is four analog in, six analog out, and it has an option to where you can actually put another four channels of input if you need it. And it's literally about the size of Grant's hand. Smaller than a pack of cigarettes. Not that anybody yeah. smokes anymore. UTVs, ATVs, um, areas where you don't have a lot of room. That is, you know, you take a look at it versus the Pro 410 right there. That's it on top of an 8 to 12 airspace. So that's less than on top a quarter of the size. Yeah. I mean, that's that tells you something right there. It's incredible technology that the company is using. And I can tell you that the things that they are doing with processors and amplifiers, it's, it's really going to help the industry tremendously. It's not to say that the eight to 12 aerospace hasn't helped the industry a lot because it has, you know, for the dollar for dollar, this is, this is the quietest and the best sounding processor out there dollar for dollar. And I'll, I don't care what anybody says. It is. Now, everything that this processor does and with the utilizing the graphic user interface that we have, all the other processors out there and processor amplifier combinations that Moscone's building all use the exact same piece. Okay. You take a look at this board. And again, it's a minimalist approach. You know, the, the three most important parts are the three big squares, three black squares you see in the middle of that, middle of that board. That's where the DSP and the DAC chips are, are, and that's where all the processing power takes place. But again, you know, when you're talking about your signal coming in and going out, when you see processors and amplifiers and preamplifiers that have 22,586 parts in it, that signal has got to go through all those parts. And how many phase changes happen? Yeah, that's the reason they do this, because they want to minimize that. Right now, as you can see, there are nine DSP slash DSP amplifier combinations built by Moscone. Yes, there's another one coming. In the one series, there's a brand new 100.6 DSP. That is coming. That should be here by the first of the year. At least we hope it is. But they all use the same graphic user interface. They all have the same kind of flexibility and power. And I will tell you that the Pico 8 to 10 DSP and the Pico 6 to 8 DSP and the Pico 4 to 8 DSP have become extremely, extremely popular because of their flexibility. Now, the 8 to 10, you can take, it's got 10 channels of output. You've got eight channels of amplification on the input side. Uh, it's extremely flexible. Same thing with the 6 to 8 DSP. It's extremely flexible as the 4 to 8. One of the things that I want everybody to know, um, and, and Grant will like this, um, is that yesterday we at Orca received all of our sound up pieces in. We have all the harnesses in for Tesla, for Hyundai. Yeah, they are here. Uh, they are being cataloged as I speak. They're going through them right now. And these are the two most important amplifiers for all of those harnesses, the 8 to 10 and the 6 to 8. Those harnesses will plug directly into these amplifier processors. And you will be able to go onto Gladen's website and you're going to be able to download tunes for a lot of cars, including Tesla, that are going to be automatic. So all you have to do is run your speaker in, in just get the speakers installed, plug the amps into the process, into the into the harnesses, the harnesses plug off of the factory amp and download the tune. You're done. That's going to include EQ, crossover, time alignment, everything. Stop and think about how easier things just got and how much flexibility is built into these processors they're going to make this as simple as we po as they possibly can and give you the flexibility to where if you want to go in and make changes you're going to be able to do that so you can tailor the car to how your customer wants it to sound 
Right now we're at uh, graphic user interface 3.24. This is it right here. Um, as you can see, nothing. It, it's the exact same thing that we're all used to using uh, for the last year and a half or so. Uh, we're excited um, about the future with Moscone and Gladen. Um, I can't wait to see what's coming. Um, they won't tell us, but uh, I wish. Because we're bad at keeping secrets. That's why they won't tell us. Huh? That's because we're bad at tech keeping secrets. Oh, that's I, I, I'm tell the first one to tell you. When I see something that's really cool, you know, I'm like, man, we need to start marketing this and letting everybody know the cool stuff's coming. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think <laughs> I love having you guys on so much? You guys are so easy. <laughs> it doesn't take much to pry any new information out of you two. So, uh, first of all, Nick, thank you again for speaking the, of easy. You want to get Ben all worked up? Let's just do yeah. This. Okay. Well, I got a couple of questions. I, I know we we've got we've got Jim in the back. We're going to bring in, but I, I did have two three points. I just want to clarify based on that presentation. So let's go ahead and take down the presentation. And here's my first question on the um, the eight channel. Did you say Nick that it is the same size form factor as the Pro Five Thirty? Same size as the 430 and the 530. So the all 430, the, the 530, and the 8 all share the same chassis, correct? Yes. Correct. Now, on the on this, on this the uh, DSP performance of the 8 mm -hmm. channel, you mentioned it's the 812 aerospace. Is that no. the – did you say it was the same function, or is it actually same. the same processor? No, it's same functions as the oh. as 812 aerospace. It is not an aerospace processor, though. Okay. okay, so it there is has, there is a quality benefit to going with multiple chassis and using an aerospace, true aerospace A12. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There is. Um, now, you mentioned that, you know, some people do Pro 110s all around per channel, which we're about to meet one of those crazy people. Uh, you mentioned Chris Pate, who, you know, obviously uses uh, a different configuration sometimes. We've also have Nolica's uh, Bronco that Grant has mentioned many occasions. What about the idea of running two eights, one left, one right? Sure. I don't see why not. That way you can get a three channel up and then use the the, the last two channels bridge for two subs, let's say, for example. Sure. I mean, if you've got really efficient subs, yeah, absolutely. Okay. 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 And uh, last but not least, um, what Nick was referring to were uh, application-specific harnesses. It's a little bit of a different conversation. I know we've talked about it in the past, but this is wicked cool because from a dealer perspective, we're talking about repeatable, predictable results every single time with a click of a button download, like Nick mentioned, delay, right, uh, crossovers, everything oh, wow. preset. Yep, it's all like you can literally tell the customer if you had a demo. So, for example, let's say you had a Tesla, you had a demo vehicle, you mm -hmm. sit them in the car. This is exactly what yours is going to sound like. Yeah, that's an amazing yeah. thing to say in a demo. It, I I could not agree more. And you know, this is where the your their client is going to have the opportunity to choose the speakers they want mm -hmm. to use, and then the initial tune and the initial download you can do, and then. You go in there and fine tune the car, which I know that some manufacturers out there, you cannot get into their tune. Well, they're doing this, but you cannot get into the tune and change it. Whereas yeah, my, if you don't like it too bad. Yeah, just but, too bad. Yeah. Well, that's not going to be the case with, with any of this. You're going to be able to go in there and tailor it to your customer's satisfaction. Very, very cool. Um, oh, yeah. I've got Can't, a couple other things. But I'm yes, going to sir. save it for a little mini roundtable at the end of today's session. How's that? All right. Uh, for me. Yes. For, don't worry, Grant. We're going to get into what you're holding there. And I'm going to zoom in on and I have some questions for that as well. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to get you guys to sit back for a second. And uh, we're going to bring in our guests. So we want to get to know our dealer today. Um, you know, there's Moscone dealers everywhere. But there's not always a Moscone dealer that is this passionate about the product that not only does he sell it in his store, but he also competes with it as a sound competitor. We're going to go to Arkansas and then talk with the owner of Audio Innovation, and his name is Jim Rogers. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jim. Thanks, and uh, welcome to CME. Well, thanks. Uh, let's get to know your shop real quick. Arkansas Audio Innovations, how long have you been around? What do you guys do? What do you specialize in? What kind of products do you sell? Uh, been around, opened up in June of 2015. Been around the industry since 89, I guess. Um, kind of a everyday, we're in a weird environment with a town that's 
60, 62,000 people and three colleges. So clientele's all over the board. We've got a large tech company here in town that does quite a bit. Is And then we have anything from 16-year-olds to 70-year-olds looking for audio. So it's so, a wide range of audience that can come through your store. A uh, wide range of cars as well. Mm, very much so. Man. Now, as far as uh, the offering, what, what type of brands do you offer your customers? Our key lines are the Orca family of Moscone, Focal, Gladen, as well as Sony and Kicker are our main lines. Okay, fair enough. So you got a little offering, got some power sports there going on, you know, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, now, this whole thing with you competing, is this, a, is this out of uh, passion to, uh, uh, for car audio? Is this something that helps your business? What is the strategy or story there? I started off just love of car audio. A judge for Iaska for going on 14 years and retired in 03, kind of disappeared from the national because of burnout and ran into Mr. Wingate and Mr. Feltenberger again back at Knowledge Fest 2011 and got pulled back into the judging lanes and competition lanes again. So and this is before you had a business. Correct. Okay. I was working for another retailer. You're working for another retail. Somewhere between competing since meeting Nick again or reconnecting with him, uh, you decided to uh, embark on the adventure that is audio innovation now. Correct. All right. Yeah, lack uh, of now, customer service at some other shops just nails on the chalkboard. Fair enough. Fair enough. And yeah. are you uh, an installer yourself? Correct. All right. So you, oh, I'm talking to the 360 here. You do everything. You're a business owner, a competitor, and an installer. And toilet cleaner, whatever. Toilet needs cleaner, done. of course, you're a business owner. Yeah. We understand that. Uh, now, do, or do you involve yourself in the tuning aspect of the process? I do to a point. I can get it about 90% of the way there. And too many years of SPL, the fine detail is <laughs> my background started with an SPL competitor by the name of Tim Maynard with the Terminator Blazer that you may uh, or may not remember. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. my start 30 plus years ago. So. Okay, so you started with ear bleeding type scenarios and then yeah. moved your way into a little bit of SQ. Okay, now tell us about your whip. Tell us about this ride that you're competing with. What, what's in there? Uh, it's a 2012 Dodge Ram four-door. Uh, consists of a Sony GS9 head unit with an iPad floating over it. Then we go to the Utopia 6.3 and Tweet front stage. Yes, and an sir. Illusion 10 buried in the center console out of sight that really messes with folks. You've got a 10 inch up front? Yeah, 10 inch sub in the center okay. console of the Dodge Ram. Okay. Uh, 8 to 12 aerospace. Um, current build is the 430 that we've talked about here, a Pro 410 running centers and soon to be rears, and a Pro 1 running the Illusion 10. Where's the other subs? What subs? That's it's just it. The 110. Yeah. Oh, 110. Okay. Okay. That one Illusion 10 buried up front and bolted into the steel of the dash does wonders. Interesting, very interesting. All right, so, well, because this is a Moscone show, let's focus a little bit about the Moscone components. Now you mentioned, obviously this is a recent rendition um, of the correct. system, uh, since you just mentioned you have a 430 in there, that hasn't been that long. Um, no, it's one of the first ones shipped out in all said. All right, all right. So you must've been part of that gang that Nick was telling me about about six months ago that had pre-ordered this unit. Correct. Okay. Uh, can you can I bring you back in time to the moment you finally plug this into a system that you obviously are very intimate with? You know everything about it, tonality wise, details, all that. Uh, tell us about that experience when you turn it on for the first time. I was still running the old Berlinium threes in it at the time, um, but just the change in the sound quality with pulling the four Pro ones out, I was worried dynamics and that with the power loss were going to be an issue. That was far from the case. Uh, staging actually went outside the vehicle and actually pushed forward probably eight to 10 inches. Mm -hmm. So made quite a bit of difference. And that was before any kind of tuning. So my concern when for Nick first described to me this amplifier was, number one, it made it very obvious that this is a different type of amplification than anything else in the Pro Series line. Um, having said that, that that could have altercations, right? I mean, it ha will have an impact on the tonality and, uh, and all that type of stuff and the type of amplification as well. So you were coming out of a system whereby each driver in your system was being powered by a mono class D amplifier, correct? Correct. And now you're switching to that AAB 
uh, scenario that we just covered. Uh, what would, how would you describe that difference? Never mind the concerns and the specification. Never mind the numbers. What was your concerns with um, the output? Uh, I was worried about the loss of dynamics. Like I said, with the power change, what surprised me is the change in tonality and the warmth it brought. It's the closest thing to home audio I've ever experienced in a car. In 30 plus years of building cars, it it's still shocking. Like even when I'm daily driving it, I've pulled over and stopped thinking that I had had a channel fail because the way the recording's done, if it's not something far left, the left speaker disappears and you think it's out. The, Interesting. It's the signal to noise and the separation and how detailed the instruments get is spooky. Um, one of the first things that scared me with it, I was up the shop late one night in the dark tuning and the Alanis set. I'm sorry, Alanis Miles track, Black Velvet. I don't know if you remember the track. Alana Miles, Black Velvet, Canadian citizen. Yep. Yes, we know. If you Miles. ever noticed in the first 20 seconds, she's whispering off mic to the right side of stage. I never noticed that. Go back and listen. Okay. It scared the devil out of me up here at the shop late one night by myself to hear somebody whispering and didn't know what it was. Had to go back and listen again. Interesting. Okay. We had a now, lot of fun with that track at finals as a demo track. I bet. I'm going to add that to my little demo list here. I did not realize that that would, that would have that. Okay. So um, you saw, so we're going to, I'm going to ask you two more questions. So you saw that sure. reaction video from the guys at five car, uh, five star car stereo. Yeah. Uh, would you comment on that for me? I think they hit it dead on the nail. I mean, I've played with about all of the different amps in the Moscone line. This one will shock you as far as just the sound and how natural it sounds. One of the things I've gotten using Frank Sinatra tracks as demos, never could stand his voice before. It is one of the most natural sounding things I've put together so far. Man, you know, I haven't asked Nick if he tried his Hotel California track on that yet, but I'm gonna ask oh, him that God. in a minute. <laughs> no. <laughs> And no Rebecca Pigeon. No. All right. All right. So now I want you to comment on um, the way that Nick has described. He used a very specific reference, and that is tube. I don't have a lot of experience with tube amps other than some quick demos at different retailers. So can't really comment on that. How about any other um, adjectives or descriptions that he has used? The warmth and natural sound is probably the best description I think he's used. I mean, you just, if you close your eyes, you forget what environment you're in. And that the only other time I've experienced this was when we put together the million dollar room for Knowledge Fest for the Focal anniversary. And I got the chance to listen to the Grand Utopias oh, before, okay. before they we opened the room up to everybody. So we got some really good quality time with those. That's the only thing I've heard even that I've come close to for that level of high end. Now, now for those tuning in, I just want to remind you, we're not talking about any system that he is changing. We're talking about uh, somebody who is very passionate, who has spent a lot of time tuning that system. And we are talking about Utopia M's. Like, I mean, Correct. We're top of the line, there's, you know, arguably there's nothing else that's even in that category. So to, for, for you to uh, speak to the type of tonal differences that you've heard um, obviously means a lot. So on that note, Jim, I want to thank you for coming on. But here's the fun part. We're going to bring Grant and, and, and Nick back in. We'll kind of round this out with maybe any questions you may have from the, car, from the presentation. I'd love to see if you had any questions that we can ask Nick. Um, and then let's take a closer look on that beautiful piece of machinery that Grant has had on his desk since we started this that we're going to get a little deeper probe on. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's bring back the gang, shall we say. Gentlemen. Oh, so you know, you know I, I, I got a kick out of that. A lot of miles whispering in your ear at midnight. Mm -hmm. Back in the 90s, mm -hmm. that would have been cool. I don't know about now, but. Oh, well, back in the uh, 90s, I, I was listening into it in very dark <laughs> rooms with brass rails. So anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wasn't paying attention to those tonal <laughs> details back then, but anyhow. I feel quite certain you were. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. If, okay, I'm so let's just, just say this right now. If anybody, yeah. if anybody says Hotel California, 
I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know I had to do that while you had, you're in the back room. I'm sorry. Talk about Rebecca Pigeon. Don't go there. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's 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 get this out of the or way. Yellow Can raincoat or blue raincoat? What the hell is No, that? that's oh, Jennifer, Jennifer Warren. Warren. I see how Jennifer that Warren's yeah. Pick my nose um no. let's get Frank uh no, so you said Frank. Uh Grant on full screen. Let's take a look at this amplifier in closer detail, please. So one thing I will say, and I, I think I've said this before, you know, when it comes to the industrial design of Moscone amplifiers, uh let's can we get that uh, amplifier? Uh, image up full screen. Let's see. There he is. I mean, it is hard to argue on the design elements um, of this piece of machinery. Um, somebody early on said, you know, red fan porn. And you know what? I, I hate to be the one to admit, but yeah, that is an iconic look that I am very, very not opposed to. Um, the way that the frame is built, exactly. Thank you, Grant, for, for doing that. I wanted to show how that comes together. Oh, I just knocked the end off of it. Don't knock the end off of it. <laughs> Well, it took us apart for a couple of things. I wanted to show you the red porn fan, the red fan porn. Then also, like, there's a lot of guys doing this, taking the mesh off and okay. color matching it to their vehicle or accent coloring oh, it to it. So it's another cool is... thing you can do that you can't do with some other amplifier. Yeah. And I will say this. There is simply no other amplifier that even looks physically like these. I mean, it is a signature iconic look from a distance. So there, I got a 530 here with this clothes on. There we go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Now, uh, Nick, can you speak to a little bit about accessibility from an installer standpoint once installed? In what respect, man? It's like this has been designed to be serviceable. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Jim can tell you that. You know, you, mm. you take a look at all of your inputs and outputs are on one side of the amplifier. How many times, and Jim, Jim will tell you this, how many amplifiers have we installed to where the inputs are on one side, the outputs are on the other, and the turn-ons on the back side of the amplifier? Now, who the hell designed that? I'd like to take them outside and beat them. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you know, because you've got wires coming in, you've got wires going this way, you've got wires coming this way, and, and so how am I supposed to build something uh, aesthetically pleasing as far as a shroud is concerned to make that work. Then you got to worry about input versus output. RCA, do I have to use a right angle RCA? Oh my God. How many times did I have to go find a right angle RCA to make it work because of where they, it, I, we can go on. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Suffice it to say, you know, when you have like, like the 530 that's sitting right there, it's all right there. It's really easy. It, 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 you know, all the tools that are necessary for you to install the wiring come with it. You know, uh, there's a torque. What What are those terminals? I'm sorry, I will cut you off there, Nick. Like, I only see holes. So are those like hex screws in there? That yeah. I can't see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what yeah. you do is, you know, Grant showing you the input. That's, and there's, okay, so on the top right there. Oh, okay, I see now. Okay, that's where you access you know, the, the screws. Everybody will say the torque screws or the or the hex screws. And what you do is you just basically you know insert the tool, unscrew it, gotcha. put the wire gotcha. in, and plug it in and just torque it down. You know, and if you do like Dina Fernando do, you know, and, and make sure that you've got you know a solid piece of metal that is going to cinch properly down onto the wire and then you plug it into the amplifier and you can cinch it further. Yeah, you've got a really, really good strong mechanical connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass this to uh, Jim. Any questions that you may have or any comments you'd like to make that uh, are relevant to our discussion today? Well, you asked about the serviceability. How many times have we gone digging for a mirror just to go find gain settings? Mm. Then you should pop a magnet and it's all on top Easy access, easy setup and adjustment. But very, very yeah, inside. I got, a, I got a question. I got a question, Jim. We're talking about your car and your comp and your your competing and stuff like that. How did you do in the last competition you did? Oh, uh, took third place with the Emma, a third place Iaska, and then a first place Iaska for the kickoff event. Before we found a couple issues that had been pointed out. <laughs> you hush, Nick. <laughs> Um, after we got done fixing a few things, we had a line of judges wanting demos when they finished. It made enough of a buzz. 
And you have so, to compete in expert class, so it's not Joe consumer. No, actually, I'm in pro am. He's in pro am. Okay. Yeah, I'm in pro am, and then the modified limited for the Emma group. And Emma is more based on the car modifications than your industry affiliation. I understand. So I understand. So, um, you know, Nick, you've done a great incredible job explaining the differences the technical differences and all that type of stuff i want you to tell us or the dealers more importantly you know why this needs to be shown in your showroom in a demo board or in a demo vehicle why is this so important especially well, the, especially sorry let me be specific especially the 430. okay we can sit here and and jim and i can talk about what the amplifier sounds like okay but until you experience firsthand what this sounds like, you have no, you have, you don't have a clue. And if you're going to sell this amplifier at the price point it's at, this is where you've got to do top down sales. Um, you're going to have a 430 on the board. And now that Grant is selling Focal, praise the Lord. Um, we can make sure that there is a, a 6WM and a TBM on the board tuned with a 430 on it. And then you can say, now is Mr. that the Mr. match made in heaven? Just for, to be for clarity, mm -hmm. the utopia, the match made in heaven, utopias with the fourth, with the 430. Yep. I promise there's, I, there's nothing like it anywhere mm -hmm. in this world in car audio. Mm -hmm. It is magic. Um, I'm pretty sure Keith McCumber's on here. I'm pretty sure Keith will back me up on this one too. Um, it's amazing. The detail, the structure in instruments, three-dimensionality, timbre, all of those things, you know, as, as a salesperson, if you have the opportunity to tell your customer exactly what to listen for and then play it, and they hear exactly what you have told them. We're done. You know, if they Your can, job if is done. they're willing to spend the money. They're going to spend the money. And even if they're not, that that gives you the opportunity to say, okay, fine. I'm gonna still. We're going to play this amp, but I'm going to go from Utopia to K2 Power. And then you know what happens? They get pissed. <laughs> right. Because you've taken something that, away. You've um, taken something away. You've taken something yeah, away. Yeah, and human beings don't like things taken away from us. They get mm -hmm. your bank gets mad. And so when you have that opportunity to use that amplifier, this is a great sales tool, if nothing else, to be able to point out the difference between Utopia K2 Power Flax and now Slate Fiber. <laughs> and we still have that amplifier. <laughs> Y'all are screwed. Mm -hmm. gotcha. As a customer, you're screwed. Which is exactly now, what we want. I, I have the absolute best platform to demonstrate Focal's technology. Oh, no. So you're, you're buying from me. Let's go to our dealer now. So you, uh, Jim, a unique situation. You actually have a demo vehicle with these specific products in it. What would you recommend to other dealers uh, that want to be successful in selling this great product? You've got to demo it. You've got to create that experience. You'll have some that all they want to do is read the spec sheet. But until you can hear and physically experience it, there's no way to describe it. Um, that's something that I've been taught for many years that we don't sell product, we sell an experience. And that's the way you've got to look at it. Uh, I use the truck quite a bit as a demo tool, uh, as much as I hate keeping it clean to do it. But... Yeah, once you hear that, or even on the demo, like in the background now, we have Utopia's playing, and that's what stays playing all day in the shop. We'll start with that, explain what we're going to play, and then play the same track over and take things away. Mm -hmm. That's Calm the down. the advantage of a demo board set up and tuned correctly. So, okay, my last question, and we'll wrap it up sure. here. Can you do you feel that you've played with this gear enough now? If I played you a 430 next to a 410, for example, could you pick it out on the same set of speakers, the same situation? Yeah, with the same tune, yes, yes, it's that big of a difference, really interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Grant, did you have any I questions have for Nick? Oh, with... sorry, sorry, Jim, go ahead. 
Oh, no, you're good. I was going to say, I've played with every one of the pro amps so far in that mm-hmm. truck, except for the 210. Okay. And this is by far and away the biggest difference. Okay. Uh, Grant, any questions for Jim or uh, Nick before we let them go? No, I just want to thank Jim for coming on. I know you're running a shop. Oh, no problem. And, uh, you're, you're busy, and we really appreciate you coming on. And Nick, as always, yes, sir. the best. I don't care what everyone else says about you. I think you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, we do have a really good question coming in from a viewer here. The question yes, is, uh, the 430 is best on which drivers in a three-way? The tweeter mid-range or tweeter mid-base? If you're just, just going to use the four channels, tweeter mid-range. And then I get yeah. another one, bridge it, and put it on the mid-base. Because that's how you roll. That's, but that's the only way to roll. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. Go big or go home. Jesus. They ask the question. Don't you ask the question. Don't be scared of the answer. There you go. Nope. All right. Well, uh, Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. And Nick, it's always, you know, a pleasure to have you on, sir. So thank Anytime, you so much for man. the time. Anytime, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll let you guys go. Anytime, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for having me. Take care, yeah. guys. Thanks, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. All right. So that was Jim Rogers. Uh, representing Audio Innovation uh, out in Arkansas, and of course, our man Nick Wingate, national trainer for Orca. Let's bring Grant back in here, and we'll close this out right here. Grant, uh, you've got a brilliant, innovative, sexy product line on your hands with 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 Moscone. Uh, final words: you, you mentioned something about maybe an offer. I'd love to give you an opportunity to close out. Yeah, I'm going to work on an offer for dealers that want to put these on their display boards. We're going to work on a a aggressive demo program. Obviously, we're working with Focal now as well, so we'll make that combination work uh, to your advantage. We want people to experience this amplifier, and that's what you're doing. And when you demo it, you're experiencing it. You can you can have an amplifier on the display that's a third of this price and make it loud and and make the speakers move, but it's not going to make them sound like the way the way they can. So. Uh, our our mission here is to make all these speakers that we have from Focal or even your other brands that you have that are high range speakers sound as best as they can and help you close higher ticket sales. So we're going to do our best to make that work. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, if you're interested in Moscone product information, Moscone-America.com is the website. It's a pretty uh, update. I think there's another website coming up, but this one here will get you covered as far as all the information you require. Um, just so you know, the latest, the A channel might not be up there yet, but if you Google it, you'll find lots of information on the A channel. And finally, if you happen to be in the Canadian region and you're interested in becoming a Moscone dealer for your area, get a hold of the folks at Trends Electronics, trendsinc.com. Grant, thank you so much for coming in. That was a good one. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it, buddy. As always. <clears throat> All right. Audio file is on the menu here at CMA Networks right through until November. Every single day, we are featuring another top-notch audiophile brand. Tune in at 12 p.m. every day throughout the audiophile sessions. While you're on our website, we've got an incredible contest going on. If you're into fab and install, then you already know about Master Tech Expo, and we are giving away two all-inclusive trips to Master Tech Expo in 2023. We are giving away one for a Canadian resident and another one for an American resident. All you got to do is head over to cmanetworks.com slash giveaway, sign up, and win an all-inclusive trip on us. And finally, if you're on the website, cmanetworks.com is where you're going to find more videos just like this one. Check out Nick Wingate's profile page under Trainers or all of Trends' uh, playlist under the playlist Trends Electronics. CMA Networks, it's basically where the 12-volt industry connects. Hey, this was a fun one. Thanks for keeping it locked here in CMA Networks and this CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time. We connect. Yeah, roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to SiriusXM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What?
Kevin Hart's left what? <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs>